Good morning. Can there be a deliverance greater than the coming out of Egypt? Today we're at Jeremiah 23, and we're at verses 7 and 8. Here's our reading. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that they will no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the descendants of the house of Israel from the north country, and from all the countries where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Now, every Hebrew hearing this prophecy would understand that Jeremiah was referring to the Exodus, where God delivered his people from Egypt and they came along and came back into the promised land. This nation is now in one of its ultimate crises. The country's being invaded and it almost looks like it's going to come to nothing. It almost looks like, and it almost looks like it's going to come to nothing. But Jeremiah is predicting that we won't even remember the Exodus anymore. Instead, we'll remember a deliverance from the northern country. He's talking to Babylon, which invades from the north and is presently invading the land. Who can envision this greater deliverance? Well, Jeremiah envisions it. The deliverance from Babylon would be so much greater that in the memory of God's people, it would even be greater than the deliverance from Egypt. It's going to take something to be a greater deliverance than the exodus from Egypt. Now, let's not forget our context here either. This isn't just literal Babylon. There is a, also a spiritual Babylon, a bigger than literal Babylon, a Babylon which represents all false religion that comes down and en engulfs God's people and is trying to destroy us. So there's not just deliverance from literal Babylon, that would be wonderful, but deliverance ultimately from spiritual Babylon, that would be the greatest deliverance of all. You and I are subject to spiritual Babylon. It's part of the world we live in. There's a lot of error out there that isn't matching the Bible. And so this prophecy turns out not merely to be for the Jews of the time of Jeremiah. This is a prophecy for, for all time, including our time. God's plan is still to deliver all of his people from spiritual Babylon. Spiritual Babylon is still standing. It's out there today. He will overturn and he will deliver us. And the errors we face today are extreme. They're rooted in these very extraordinary, deep philosophical ideas, not so deep, but deeply entrenched philosophical ideas. And there's theological error too. And the misinterpretation of the Bible is, is in many places, isn't it? But the errors out there today actually even deeply impact the way we think. They impact the way we reason. And a lot of things that we thought were secular errors and, and that weren't really religious, we're finding out that a lot of the secular things really have quite a religious side to them as well. So we have spiritual Babylon and we have an even broader kind of error out there. God's going to deliver us from all of it through Jesus. All these different human style religions out there that are coming away from God's word, that are moving us away from God's word, they'll all be defeated. They're all part of spiritual Babylon. God is getting ready to deliver us all. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness. Help us to follow your word. Help us to be able to discern right from wrong, truth from error. Help us, Lord, to uh, be people of the book and to not falter and slip into the things of spiritual Babylon. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer today and being a prayer-hearing God who wants us to be right, and so you gave us your truth in the book. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So rejoice and be exceedingly glad deliverance is coming. And if you and I stay right with Jesus, we'll be on the right side. The Lord be with you today as you go out and serve him in his world.